drinking coffee on my balcony. Trees are dancing to the whistle of the wind. Lord, I'm thankful for everything. Alex is one of my newest guys to the crew and although he's ran skid loader he's never ran a hand foot control skid loader and he's never learned to how to read a grade or to run a laser so if you're just tuning in in the first part of this video we taught him how to set grades and now he's actually got to cut those grades for the first time using a hand foot control bobcat and a four-in-one bucket more aggressive it's more aggressive isn't it <laughs> he's trying to get the finesse down of this four-in-one bucket and it's a different set of skills he gave up quitter give Alex a little crap he's a new operator I mean that means I can give him crap gotta have a pretty damn good sense of humor to come work for me hey is that four in one bucket scare ya try it again you might as well get used to it. Drop your dirt off. There we go. So Alex is going to use a four-in-one bucket for the first time. And it's a, it's a lot more aggressive. And so he's not used to it. It's a different set of skills. Definitely retraining I know over in Europe they use them all the time you don't see them that much here in America to be honest with you all the job sites I've been on I rarely see these things on them uh oh that's not a good sound I wonder what that sound was But you can see that four-in-one bucket. Well, he should have put the nose down right there. It just bites really fast. So one of the tricks with the four-in-one bucket is the fact that you can't see your cutting edge. When the bucket raises up and you want to use this more like a dozer blade, at least in this loader, 
you're almost completely blind. So I'm going to give it to them. You have to actually go by feel. And if you are not used to the feel of the machine, it's going to be a little bit difficult. A lot of times a guy likes to visually see how he's doing with his bucket edge, but there's going to be times when you can't do that. And with a four in one bucket, that's exactly what's happening. And that's what's throwing Alex off. So that's why I'm going to hop in here just to kind of give him some pointers. I want him to actually see what it looks like from outside the machine so that he can get a better idea of how to run this four in one. They are so finicky. Okay. So on this job, what we're actually going to do is we're going to conserve the top dressing. So we've got, when you're actually doing a dirt work job, you'll have different layers of soil. And this is the, I, you can talk, call it whatever you want. I just call it the top coat, the top layer. Then you've got the subsoil, and that is literally the soil underneath. We're actually going to separate the top coat because this was all imported in. And it doesn't look like much right now, Alex, but probably six seven hundred dollars worth of gravel here so what we're gonna do is we're just gonna skim off the first the top quarter of an inch and we're just gonna put that in a pile outside of our work zone and save it because when we're done setting our grade we're gonna take that same material and put back over the top of it otherwise we're just gonna have mud throughout the whole driveway okay but the thing to think about is well, wait a minute, if we're skimming an eighth to a quarter of an inch of this, this top stuff off and we're going to put that back on, that also comes into the calculation of our setting our grades, right? Because if we get all our grades set with our subsoil, that's the ground underneath the top layer, and then we add more dirt to it or add more soil to it, we've now thrown off all of our numbers. So our number over there was two and a half inches, right? Well, we've got to actually cut the subgrade down two and three quarters of an inch or, you know, a little over two and a half. Yeah. Just enough that we can put this stuff back on without throwing off our grades. One of the things, too, that we've got to remember is every time that we do something like that, we're adding soil over there. If there's trees over there, if they're oak trees, they're going to die. You can never, you can't even add this much soil on top of an oak tree. So I don't want to get you started on the wrong foot because I'm allowing you to add trees because these are junk trees. I don't care if they die or not because I'm just gonna burn them up one day when they do fall over and do whatever they do. So let's fire up the T or let's fire up the, the skid loader and let's get started doing what we gotta do. <laughs> can see right here this ridge that needs to go down and he can do it that way. Okay, hope. Drop that. Now let's do it now, Alex. Let's do a compare and contrast. 
back up and hit the same spot with the four in one bucket. Hit the same spot with the four in one bucket. I want to see how much better it cuts. Because you guys can see how aggressive he had to get. Yep. All the way up. Okay, down. Come on. Here we go. Angle, 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 angle. Other way, yep. Yep. A little less. There we go. He's a bit too aggressive. All right, come on. Yeah, there you got it. Now you, a little down. Oh, back up. Pitch it, pitch it. There we go. Pitch it. All right, it's gonna take a little work. All right, back up. Let's give it a go again. No worries, no worries. I don't like that sound. What the hell is that sound? I hope that's a rock in there. All right. Otherwise, I'm burning up my gears. Perfect. Oop. Come on, real slow. Let's get it right. There we go. Yep, yep. A little bit more, a little bit more. Yep, yep. Now we got her lower down, lower down. There we go. Now we're getting her. Now we're getting her. All right, come on forward. Let, you can raise up. Yep. And drop her back down. Drop her back down. Yep, yep. There we go. All right, lift her up and go by feel. There you go. Man, that four and one just is, cuts aggressive. That's nice. Skid loader with foot controls. It's part of that new world generation. It only runs hand controls, which I don't understand. Because we always grew up with just foot controls. And he's a little high right there. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna blend this hill in. Yeah. 
So to blend that hill in means we've got to actually start all the way up by the front of the barn so that we don't get any sharp drop-offs. What we're trying to do is get everything to flow really nice away from all of these buildings, the bread barn and that gray shed as well, and to divert to two different areas, directly behind the skid loader and then down and around the corner as well. So when we're grading a driveway, we can't have high spots or low spots. And right in front of the skid loader, right there, is a little bit of a low spot. And that needs to be filled up. Now there's a couple different ways that that can happen. One, Alex could go behind the skid loader and start to grab a little bit of that ridge of that hill off and bring that forward. Or he could go uh, down the other slope and grab some of that and push that up. And you're going to see him do that in just a moment. But either way, that low spot has got to be filled up. So as he's coming forward, he doesn't need to do anything in this area. He's already got the grade set, but right there, he's got a slight ridge and he's got to get rid of that ridge. And that doesn't mean you're moving a lot of material. You've just got to move just enough to eliminate that low spot. And when it comes to the fine tune and grading, it may not look like you're accomplishing a whole lot, but in reality, just shaving certain areas off and moving the material over to other places is all you need to do to eliminate any problem areas down the road. It's a, it's a game of finesse, really is what it is. So he's done with the mass dirt moving and now it's just almost as much time finessing as it was just doing the mass dirt moving in the beginning. So when you stand down from a grade and look up, it may look like everything flows really good, but this is where reading grades by using your eye gets to be very tricky. When you're at the downward side looking up a grade, you can't see little ridges. And those are divots because under on the bottom side of that divot, everything disappears. The divot doesn't disappear, but everything else disappears. So you can't read a grade just by looking at it from the bottom side. That's why we're trying to show how to use a laser because that way you're going to eliminate any problems. It's like an op it's basically an optical illusion that you just got to get rid of. All right guys, I've been gone a couple hours. Let's see how the noob is doing. This looks really good. This looks good. I see this grade though. I don't know if that, if we've got a pitch running out that way. The only way to tell is what the laser says. How'd you do? You tell me. Did you check with the laser? Yeah. Everything looks good. Okay, okay. Okay, so let's see if we've got pitch because we want pitch running all the way down past the building and then down past this building here. So grab your rod. Have you checked your pitch? I just checked my benchmark. You did? Here, yeah. Okay. All right. Well, let's see how you're doing. Let's check this one. This will be the this will be the first one. So we'll go back to our benchmark just in case during the course of the day the laser got bumped somehow, way, shape, or form. So a lot of times it'll happen to somebody will stand between the laser and the receiver. 
And where are we at? Six three and a quarter, six three and a half. Six three and a half or a quarter, Alex? Yeah, Stan. Well, those are on like good numbers. <laughs> Where are we at? Six two and a half. Six two? No, is that that's six oh, three? Oh, you measure from the top there? Oh yeah. I mean, you can measure from the bottom too. Yeah, that's that's what I've been doing. I Six, so technically, no, you measure from the top. So this coincides with that. That's that's why you don't measure from the bottom. So you're six three and a uh, half, six three and a half right there, right? So then if we're lower over here, the number's gonna be higher. So we want that number to go up from six, three and a half, and that'll tell us, technically it should go up by two inches because that's a 16 foot mark. So it should be six, five and a half. Six, five and a quarter. Close enough for me. Oh. Alex has got this dialed in. Dude, you're right there, six, five, between six five and a quarter and six five and a half, you got your two inches of drop from that point to that point, and you can't eyeball that. That's where you need a laser. You nailed it. Sweet. That's with your top dressing on. So you cut the subgrade down, and you got that all cut down. So you you removed all this soil off, right? Yep. So you remove this off, then you cut the subgrade down, graded it back over here. You nailed it. All right. I think we're wrapped up, Alex. This looks good. So how did it go for you? How did you feel running your very first time ever foot con a hand foot control skid loader? I went, after a while, I got comfortable with it. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah, this looked great. Did you check your grades right here? How are we doing along here? I, I didn't check them with the actual laser. Okay. I think we've I think we've nailed everything that there is to nail. We just got to put all the equipment back. Uh, this all looks good, smooth, flowing. We know we've got a two-inch drop there. So you guys, tell me in the comments down below. Did this video help you out? I know I covered a lot of ground. Covered a lot of ground teaching Alex. So thanks for being my guinea pig and letting the world be and being comfortable letting the world know that you haven't ran one of them pieces of equipment and haven't ran a grade rod because it helps other guys. Yeah. When you're learning. It's helping other guys, and it sounds like my dog just got off the leash and was taken off down the street. I recognize that howl. It's the funniest thing, though, when I'm, like, talking to somebody, and all of a sudden my dog just <laughs> zooms right past me down the street. It's like, ah, son of a duck. <laughs> I'm going to go chase a coon out. That dog is the weirdest thing. Like, up north, you can't walk five feet without her being under your feet. You bring her to the city, she's gone. Yeah. She wants to go say hi to everybody. So, anyway... <laughs> All right, God bless you guys. Go get them. Hope this video's helped you out. Appreciate you guys sticking around to the very end. This job turned out phenomenal. Alex did a great job, especially for not having a whole lot of experience. So uh, appreciate you guys uh, coming along for the ride, and we will see you guys on the next one. And hit that subscribe button and check out these two videos, one here, one there. That's all I got for you today. All right, you guys, if you've made it this far, wow, that's awesome. And let's screw with everybody that kind of cut out in the video before they got all the way to the end. Just type in the word red, R-E-D, in the comments down below. That'll tell me you made it this far and everybody else will be like, why is everybody commenting red? Let's just screw with them. Maybe next time they'll watch the whole thing.